All right, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be going over my Julia 101 crash course, and I'll be covering a lot of topics in about 10 minutes. It'll be essentially what I covered in my basic series. I'll crunch down to 10 minutes. Now, before I get into that, so this isn't part of the 10 minute talk, I'm going to cover a little bit of some logistics stuff. So if you just want to gloss over this, there'll be a timestamp in the description and you can just jump over to that. And now I'm going to talk about the other stuff. So didn't really mention this in any of my other videos, but there is a GitHub repository that has all the code that I've written up and actually some future code from the series that I'll be talking about in the future. So you may, I just see code appearing throughout time. And that's just, that's just what all the series circles around. Besides that, when I go into these topics of I'm going to go into control flow and arrays and all these different things, but I'm going to go through it very quickly. And if you want more of the computer science background of understanding why it's done this way, or maybe a little bit, because I go a little bit into like memory and efficiency on, on the Julia stuff, then definitely the videos that focus on those topics cover it more in depth. I also realize not everyone cares about that. They just want to code and get into the work of it. And that's totally fine too. So I think that's all the logistics stuff. So I'm going to get into some quick coding here and we'll cover a lot of basics and see how everything works. All right, so let's start this. And okay, cool. So we have X4 y equals 3.5. If you saw my Python crash course, it's going to basically be uh, the same idea as that. And let's give a car. We run that. It's going to take a moment. Okay. So as you can see here, I did the same thing as before. And I'm going to do some type ofs just to show what they are. We have x, we have y, you can see that all these are different types. And going from the previous video, Julia has chars, while Python doesn't. That's really differentiated from these different quotation marks you use within the string. Okay, so let's say we want to start using these variables. Now if I want to use the, the ins and floats, and we're going to go into if x is less than zero, then we'll have it print ln x is a negative. And oh man, I am <laughs> I'm used to coding on my other editors and I'm not used to the key bindings on Jupyter. X is not negative. Okay. We're going to hit an end. I'm going to run that. X is not negative. Okay. Now, in here, we're looking at an if statement. So this is doing some control flow, and it's going based off of this X variable that we defined previously. So this is going to be passed, and we can see that... I'm going to add another cell right here. We can see that since X is greater than zero, it goes past this. So this isn't true. It goes to this else statement, which is a catch-all, and it will print out this. And then the other difference here between Python and Julia is Julia doesn't have that, those colons and instead they use end and statements to show when a statement is ended. Now, if I wanted to show that X is negative, change that, we run this X is a negative. Cool. And I'm doing everything in Jupyter right now because it shows output pretty quickly. And I feel it's a good environment just to see everything right in face value. Now, we did some control flow. What if I wanted to cover some functions? I'm going to define a function, function sum x, y, and if we want to return x plus y, we end that. Cool. So we define some function. So let's do x, y, the way it runs. Okay, now in here we have 
y, which is 3.5, and then x. Okay, so I deleted the cell, but that cell that had x negative 4 is negative 4 plus 3.5. So that comes out to a negative value. Now if I redefine, let me go above it. I redefine x as 10, rerun this, it's going to show that output. And you see functions are also pretty simple in Julia. It went, it created this pretty easily. It has the return value and it was able to output right then and there. Cool. Okay. So now I'm going to go into arrays. So I'm going to define an array a little bit differently than how I did in the videos. I'm going to do this and three, four. Five, six. I'm going to run this. Okay. So what's going on here is these semicolons define when the row is done. And you can see I have one, two, and that's the end of the row. So then three, four, and then send the row five, six. So this is my array, and it's a three by two system. Now, if I want to do some stuff with that, let's say. I have to find another one, and y is going to be, see if I can come up with some difference of value. Okay, so we have two, two arrays now, and let's, let's do some operations. So x and y can still add with each other, and it will add things this nicely. And if you wanted to, let's say I have a Z, that's a scalar now. So we have X as an array now, we have Y as an array, and Z as a scalar. So if I just wanted to add X and Z, okay, there it goes. So it got an error. <laughs> and that's because we're just adding this and it doesn't know what to do. So what we have to do is that element wise operation which you do the dot plus, and that means you want, to, you want to add this scalar value to every element within the X array. And same idea applies with Y. We don't have to do that for X when we're adding X and Y together because they know that these are both containers and they add them element by element already. But because this is a scalar value, it, has to, it needs this dot syntax. Okay, so let's define a new array and do i for i i for i in we'll go one to 20. okay so define our system and because julia always just prints out everything at the very end we just continuously do this but we're moving on from there so let's say we want to do some stuff with that so i for i in one to 20 xr and we'll add so we'll go through each index and we'll is my there you are we'll multiply by a factor of let's do something simple we'll do by a factor of two and then we'll display x or display xr now cool all right so we just did a simple for loop and we went through the system and each element we just multiplied by two. So we just doubled everything. So one to 20, and now it's two to 40. Okay, so I think the final thing I can go into is plotting. Now, if you look at the top, I already have used plotting. I ran this first just because I know plots take a long time to compile initially. And if you don't know about that, check out the plotting video. But that's already brought into scope. So we're going to bring, let's see, yeah, we'll I'll have to find new stuff. And for i in, we'll go 1 to 10 this time. And then we're just going to have something simple. Okay. And then we're going to plot x and y. Okay, and you can see the plot now. And this plotted out really nicely, and we have our x and our y. Now, because I never really got to go into this, 
but since I think I still have a minute or two, we'll see if I cover it or not. <laughs> uh, you can actually use the, this axis to name things. So we can do that. Y axis equals X. We have title. E, my. We'll do all caps because we're excited. And then say we don't want the legend over there. And top left. And DPI equals 300. All right. Now, this got massive. But you can see, oh, I also just realized I'm, I mistitled my axes. Okay, so my Y and my X are mistitled, but besides the point, you can see I named my axes, I plotted out my function, my awesome plot is the title, and, and we have our legend over there. What the heck is going on? There you go. <laughs> okay, and I think that's pretty much it for I guess, this, uh, this Julia crash course. So if you like all that, and please give me a like and subscribe. And if you want to go deeper into any of these topics I glossed over, I have a Julia series that's basically all given out now. And the intermediate series is going to be posting out after this, this video comes out. Video is out. Yes. <laughs> all right. So I will see you in the next video.